So the question asks, should marriage be postponed in order to acquire a degree or, a f or financial stability? Financial stability, yes. There's no harm in postponing marriage up until you're financially stable. As for degree, then degrees and these kind of things, no. Because there's no contradiction. There's no contradiction in seeking uh, knowledge, whether it be shari knowledge or knowledge of the dunya so that you may be able to excel in the affairs of dunya in which there is no harm to excel in the affairs of dunya as long as a person is not drowned in the dunya. But as for delaying, as for, uh, delaying because of financial restrictions, then yes, if you are not capable of supporting a wife and supporting your children, then this is something, barakallahu feekum, that you need to become stable in first. And in the times that we are living in, job opportunities are not scarce anymore. Walillahi alhamd. There are jobs available. And my advice to the sisters is, do not marry a man on the dole. No, don't marry a man on the dole who has the ability to work and he does not work. He says, I want to just go to the durus and sit in the masjid. We don't believe in monasticism in Islam or hermit, this, this type of... Uh, you know, behavior where the people go and hide in the, in the hermitage. No, barakallahu feekum. The brothers should work. They should, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, al yadul ulya khayrun min al yadi sufla. The upper hand, meaning the hand that gives. The upper hand is the hand that gives in sadaqah. It's better than the lower hand, meaning the hand that takes in sadaqah. So, my advice to the brothers and to the sisters is that the brothers, they should work hard both in their deen and the dunya. Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, used to mention the fardul kifaya upon the ummah with regard to the ummah needing speci specialists in various fields of medicine, in engineering and other, and, and other arenas, that this is fardul kifaya, dentist and so on. The ummah needs to fulfill that. So when a person says, Ya Akhi, I'm going to go and go and study you know, whatever, and, and I'm just going to leave the wife here on housing benefit. And, and uh, while she's out there, by the way, I'm going to get a second wife as well and put her on some sort of benefits. No, this is not good. This is not good. And I advise the awliya, I advise the, the, the wulat, those who are in charge of the affairs or the guardians of these sisters, that they should, barakallahu feekum, investigate with regard to the brothers. Don't just say, well, wealth isn't important. Wealth isn't important, it's true, because we're not looking for millionaires for our daughters. That's not the issue. But the issue is that if a man is able to work and to earn with his own hands, that he goes out and, and, and collects firewood to sell in the marketplace, it's better than that he begs from the people. Don't be beggars, barakallahu feekum. We ask the people for sadaqah, but not for ourselves, for the masajid, for the da'wah. For the strengthening of the da'wah. So that we can build masajid like this. Because there's no funding from governments for this. So it comes from your sweat and your blood. From the effort that you put in and the energy that you put in. So I don't advise the issue of postponing due to a degree. But I do advise that you postpone. And up until at least you can take care of her. Like the Prophet ﷺ said. That when you, when you feed yourself, feed her. When you clothe yourself, clothe her. I'm not, barakallahu feekum, very impressed with brothers who go to their wives and they take money from them. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi didn't say to the woman, when you clothe yourself, clothe him. What's this? Feed yourself, feed him. No, he's the one who should be feeding her. Al-rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said that the men are the maintainers and the protectors of women, not the other way around. And what did he mention later on? Bima anfaqu min amwalihim due to that which they spend from their wealth. Due to what they spend from their wealth, barakallahu feekum. So we're not living now in a stage whereby jobs aren't available. Jobs are available. A person says, yeah, I can't work out there because there's too much fitna. That's a poor excuse. It means that you got, there's weakness in your deen, there's weakness in your iman, that you can't go out and work without your eyes gazing at other women. No, you need to be strong. That what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't go out and give dawah in Mecca was Mecca what darul Islam? Mecca was darul kufr when the Messenger of Allah was giving dawah. Darul shirk, people making tawaf naked, idols being worshipped around the Kaaba, people getting drunk and drinking. Even he sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he stood up for the prayer, they would throw 
the entrails of camel, rotten camel upon his back, intestines and so on. But he would still go out. Well, he didn't work. So, barakallahu feekum, work and protect yourselves with dhikr and ibadah and durus. Be upon istiqamah. A Salafi is one wherever you put him, anywhere in the dunya, he will, he will be a standalone Salafi. Wherever you put him, he will. This is the nature of the Ghuraba, right? The Gharib is the one wherever you put him, the Sunnah is beloved to him. So you could put him in a place of a million mushrikun and he will remain upon Iman and Sunnah and Salafiyyah. You could put him in a place of a million Ahlul Bid'ah and he will remain upon Iman and Sunnah and Salafiyyah. You could put him in a room or in a place of a million munafiqeen and he will still remain upon Sunnah, Istiqama and Salafiyyah. This is Salafiyyah, Baraka. Salafiyyah does not change with the wind and change. As the wind blows, you leave Salafiyyah and you go somewhere else because they're the, they're the great ones. Yeah, akhi, I couldn't control myself. I had to listen to music. This is your weakness. This is weakness in your Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries you. So you have, to, you have to face the trial and stand firm, Barakallahu Fikum. What, the Anbiya weren't tried before you? Yusuf alayhi salam wasn't tried. Look how he was tried. Any woman come to you like that? The daughter of, a, in these times, what would you say? The daughter of a minister or a, or a prince? Any one of those women, beautiful? And then they gather a whole room full of them. And he still rejected it. Alayhi salam, still rejected it. And you say, yeah, I can't take my eyes off the cashiers at Asda. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you, ya ikhwan? Fear Allah. Fear Allah, fear Allah, fear Allah. Lower your gazes, ya ikhwan. Fear Allah. Jazakumullah khair.